citrus fruits are classified as acidic, exotic fruits whose seeds are usually covered with juicy pulp ranging from sour to sweet. Examples include lemon, lime, orange, grapefruit, tangerine, mandarin, clementine, and others. Packed with vitamin C, citrus aids in reducing the risks of getting cancer, having stroke, improves eyesight, and even reduces stress. Apart from nutritional value, a functioning and productive citrus industry in the Caribbean would provide jobs, increase GDP, as well as help decrease the food import bill significantly, especially in Trinidad and Tobago. So for this video, we shall take a quick review of the citrus industry in the Caribbean by looking at Belize, Trinidad and Tobago, and Jamaica. Among the islands, Belize is by far the most successful at producing citrus and the industry is the most significant agro-industry for the nation, contributing more than 50.6 million US dollars in the 2003-2004 time period. Although Belize's production is tiny compared to the citrus giants of Brazil and Florida, its production per capita is 181 US dollars per head, the highest of any country, hence the high national dependency on the crop. 80% of the citrus in the Stan Creek Valley, which happens to be the heart of the Belizean citrus, is of the Valencia variety. Valencia orange are prized fruit that give a high quality taste and calls a high price. The industry itself supports more than 1,000 farm families and 10,000 industry workers including very proud pickers from Guatemala and Honduras and is supported by the Belizean government in the form of the Belize Citrus Association. The Administrative, Financial and Sales Division of the CGA provides access to funds so that growers can finance their operations while other divisions of the CGA negotiate the best fruit prices with the processors so that growers get paid fairly. The CGA also assists in securing markets, lobbying for government policy and represents the Belizean citrus growers at national and international events. There is also the Citrus Research and Education Institute that is designed to firstly increase the industry's production of high quality citrus fruits and secondly to safeguard the citrus industry from being devastated by pests and disease. Growers receive on-farm advice and training through the Extension and Education Unit, obtain high quality plants, seeds and budwood from nursery certified under the Belize Citrus Certification Program and obtain fertilizer and liming recommendations through the Soil and Leaf Analysis Service. So far, it seems as though Belize has all its ends covered, right? Well, it pretty much does, but it still has to be on guard for crop diseases. The main disease being Hong Long Bing, which it has managed to keep under control due to many of the trees being more than 25 years old. This means that the Asian citrus psyllid that spreads the disease can't get into the leaves as old trees don't produce new tissue, a process called flushing. Other methods which have been used to control the disease involve educating growers on the symptoms of the disease so that they can either hire persons to conduct monthly surveys or do surveys themselves and bring suspected leaf samples to the CREI for testing. Infected trees must be sprayed with broad spectrum insecticides, cut down and burned. The ACP population in Belize must be monitored and controlled ensuring that insecticide spraying does not occur when plants are flushing. This is because at this time is when a high amount of insects that control ACP are present and spraying will kill them, leaving trees susceptible to infection. At this time, only plants from nurseries that have been certified should be planted. And it's because of such rigorous measures that Belize has increased its production and maintained its position in the citrus industry. In the case of Jamaica, their industry was rather unfortunate to be hit by the citrus Trustacea virus in the 90s. Farmers were forced to replace their trees, but the declining acreages and farmer population has led to the decrease in production. In 2005, Jamaica exported a mere 2,375 tons, a decline of the 5,353 bringing export earnings from US $4 million to US $1.48 million. Then in 2009, the Asian citrus psyllid was identified in three main parishes, St. Mary, Claridon, and St. Catherine. 
Heavy investments were immediately placed into controlling the ACP by the trade wind Citrus Limited, a major citrus and juice producer of the St. Catherine Parish, which contributed 3.4 million US dollars in 2012. They were further assisted by the Caribbean Agricultural Research and Development Institute, who introduced biological measures such as WASPs to aid in the ACP control. Currently, more than 2,700 acres are being cultivated with mainly Valencia oranges, grapefruit, and limes in the St. Catharines Parish. The Jamaican government is involved with the industry by working together with the Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations in formulating the Citrus Certification Program in 1996 after the problem with CTV and is currently involved in eradicating HLB in the groves with the help of Dr. Olga Mas Camacho. About $44 million in resources has been pumped into the initiative. A training manual has also been produced under the Ministry of Agriculture and Fisheries with the help of the Rural Agricultural Development Authority. There are also non-governmental organizations helping deal with the problem. The Jamaican Citrus Protection Agency was the first to warn producers of the presence of ACP, the vector that causes HLB and is known to receive promised funding from the government. The JCPA's Citrus Greening Management Practices project so far is successful and there is hope for high export production as changes in fruit size, fruit yield and health of the plants has been improved via November 2010 with assistance from the UNFAO. With continued citrus greening management, Jamaica can gain a 25% increase in citrus production. Trinidad Tobago's citrus industry is no longer existent. There are citrus growers in the country but not enough to call it an industry. However, at the moment, under the University of the West Indies, there is a project aimed at re-engineering a competitive citrus industry in Trinidad and Tobago involving the minds of Dr. Govin Sipasad, Malcolm Wallace, Terry Sampson and others. The industry has been plagued with not only pest and disease but poor production and management skills. Extension officers have been giving out dated information on the necessary spacing for the highest yield per area for years, together with growers lacking the necessary education on the agronomy and how to manage not only their land but also their finances. The government of Trinidad and Tobago has agreed to support the project by increasing current production by 1,620 acres from 2012 to 2015. The project takes a holistic view on every aspect of the industry with goals of increasing opportunities for agri-entrepreneurs and increasing local nutrition security. Brazil and Belize are the two main countries that the project is weighed against looking at Brazil's innovation in terms of production for one and Belize's production ethic. There will also be a social campaign to increase the consumption of citrus juice across the population and increase the competition amongst juices to secure the local market share as our produce will be cheaper, safer and of a higher quality. However, there must be a firm policy footing to ensure the industry remains protected once the ball starts rolling. One of the necessary pieces of infrastructure is a citrus certification program to ensure that only disease-free plants are sold to growers. Sourcing the proper rootstock is also necessary as rootstock should be selected based on soil type and tolerance to the Tristatia disease. At present, there is a flow of certified plants from the Ministry of Agriculture and Food Production, but there is a six-year lag between the persons placing the order and when they receive their order. To alleviate this problem, Private firms can be set up with the proper certifications and if done immediately, in about three years the lag would be cleared up. Focus must also be placed on education and the value chain initiatives. There is no longer the need for laborers but instead skilled technicians that know their soil, know their agronomy, post harvest and crop management. Reengineering must meet the needs for jobs in the country so that the industry can be efficient. From highlighting the productivity level of selected countries, it can be noted that citrus in this region are easily susceptible to pest and disease damage other than natural disasters. For any industry to thrive, proper management, encouraging research, funding and cooperation is mandatory. The Caribbean has gained a lot of inspiration through Billy's pioneering efforts and current success by effectively and efficiently managing their resources of land, human and capital. Trinidad has to effectively manage its resources 
or within a decade or more, Belize's efficient labor and production mentality will allow them to be the only true citrus industry competitor in the region.